Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing. It is Thursday, the 25th of July, and uh, we're here to discuss all things Rangers after last night's uh, pretty forgettable pre-season friendly at uh, St Andrews. Rangers losing to Birmingham City by two goals to one uh, to divulge what went on and all the latest transfer news. We're joined by Joshua Barry. How's it going, Joshua? Yeah, good. A few, few things to discuss this morning, Derek. We've had a few quiet days in uh, pre-season and this is not one of them. No, uh, absolutely not. Right, before we uh, dive in, just a quick word for our podcast sponsors, MPH Boilers. Uh, you know the drill now, folks. Uh, if your boiler is on its last legs, then uh, give these guys a call. They're the award-winning family-run business covering all of mainland Scotland. They've got those brilliant Viesman Boilers on offer. The all-important link is in the description below. Right, uh, where shall we start? Um, let's start with the game, first of all, before we talk about um, yeah. what the manager had to say afterwards and the latest transfer news. Uh, Joshua, you watched it in Rangers TV. I was getting messages uh, when I was at the game last night. Uh, there was some sort of uh, thing. I'm not entirely sure what it was, but uh, blocking some something yeah. of the pitch, which uh, it was a bit of a restricted view for those of you watching on, on Rangers TV. Uh, didn't miss much, I've got to say, especially in that first half, which was diabolical. Uh, and the manager did reference that in his uh, post-match press conference. Uh, Rangers were an absolute mess, not only offensively, they were powder puff, but defensively um, all over the shop at points. Uh, second half, he made changes. Scott Wright did well, well taken finishing goal from him. Um, but that was pretty much it as far as uh, Rangers are concerned. Uh, left uh, the fans watching and those that made it the long journey uh, to St Andrews, scratching their heads, thinking what is going on here, what's the style of play and uh, fearing the start of the season. Um, what do you make of it all, Joshua? Yeah, I got a few texts uh, complaining that the box restricting the view is not bigger uh, based on that first half. <laughs> it was, it was uh, yeah, it was a bit of a restricted view. Yeah, listen, I'm, I'm going to read what Leon Balogun had to say on Rangers TV in case anyone's uh, missed it because you know it is pre-season and all that. But there's also the the the, the optics, the, the tone, how you build excitement for a season. Uh, and last night, uh, second half, yeah, it was a bit better. But last night, especially the first half, was not good. I mean, Birmingham really did play. And I'll I'll come back to you because you were obviously at the game. But it felt like for a lot of that first half, Rangers couldn't get close to Birmingham. Who played well, but, you know, the the caveat of of, of what Liam Balogun is about to say. um, Asked what he made of it. He said, not good enough, quite frankly. If we we come here and we play the way we played in the first half, you have to seriously question yourself. I don't want to go into panic mode, but that's just a very honest, uh, honest assessment. There's not much uh, to say other than it was not good enough. I think in the second half, we showed a bit more. We can say Birmingham are a good side. They got relegated. I don't really care because when you play for Rangers, you cannot present yourself like that. That's just plain and simple. I'm just after the final whistle, so I'm quite mad right now, but I'm pretty sure there will be good things from the second half, even though right now it's hard to imagine. So, I mean, that's pretty uncut, obviously, from one of the more experienced members of the squad. And it was quite audible, actually, hearing the booze at halftime just watching it from TV. But I'll, I mean, I'll put it back to you, Derek. You were there um, the, the first half. There was a lot of changes made in the second half. It was a youthful squad, wasn't it? I think Clement said it was 13, 13 of 23 were for academy yeah. players. Um, but that wasn't a... It, it was the opposite of a pre-season performance, which kind of wets the whistle for the for the new season, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, we're, we're looking for a bit of an improvement. We said on the video uh, from Saturday's defeat to Manchester United's kids, let's be honest, and uh, it was probably even worse. Uh, I know they made a number of changes, the manager, but they just looked lost. Uh, offensively, the Rangers had a couple of sort of half chances going forward, picking the wrong option, uh, and they're just really lacking a killer instinct. Defensively, one of the, the plus points, apart from Scott Wright's goal, I thought Clinton and Ciala, I've seen them for the first time, th- some decent moments, I've got to say, some good blocks in the first half. Yeah. Uh, played a nice pass to Cole McKinnon uh, to set up a, a Rabi Matondo chance in the first half as well. Um, but that aside, Leon Balligan's comments are pretty much bang on. Uh, it's a worry heading into, it's going to be a step up uh, for Rangers at the weekend, going to Berlin. And uh, listen, this is a very good Birmingham side that have spent a lot of money, more money than what Rangers have spent in the summer. I know they get relegated last year, but they do have a new owner and they've enhanced the squads. Uh, They're aiming to get back into the championship at the first time of asking. Even still, uh, the Rangers' performance rightly booed at halftime. They're trying to pick positives out of it and uh, there weren't 
any really apart from what yeah. I said at the moment uh, from Clinton and Ciala. He looks like a, a young lad learning the game uh, and uh, the manager's right, we need to be patient with him. But other players uh, got an opportunity last night. Alex Lowry, I don't think, took his, uh, took his chance. Ross McCausland was, was pretty disappointing uh, as well. And uh, yeah, uh, James Tavernier came back in, which was a surprise. I don't think many envisaged, given the noise surrounding his future, that he would start the game. Uh, he very much looked like a guy that hasn't played much football uh, in uh, recent weeks. And uh, yeah, no surprise to see him hooked at half time. But uh, yeah, second half, it was uh, no surprise to see him making changes. Uh, nice to see mm-hmm. some of the, the young lads coming on, like uh, uh, Stevens, Rice, Curtis as well made an appearance. So uh, that was good uh, to see them. It'd be good experience for them. But in the main, I mean, Scott Wright was deployed as, as a number 10. Uh, whether we will see that going forward, I think he quitted himself reasonably well. Danilo looked so off the pace, uh, it's uh, unreal. Uh, I th- think that is uh, a real concern for Rangers going forward uh, up front because uh, Serial Dressers, who came on, didn't really look like scoring. Had a couple of half chances himself, but yeah. sort of fluffed his lines. And uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I can understand fans' frustrations. A lot of comments yeah. coming in saying it's worse. This is one of the worst Rangers teams that they've ever seen. And uh, it's uh, people saying that the Pedro Cachinha's team would uh, beat this Rangers side. And uh, on last night's evidence, you can't really can complain about that or uh, dispute it, really. I guess, yeah, listen, if you're looking for positives from last night, there isn't, there isn't any, and there's no point of trying to dress that up. What you can say is that if you look at that start in 11, how many of those players would be expected to start in Rangers' strongest start in 11? It's probably a bit of a different picture if you have Baron and Diomandi in the middle, if you have maybe Cortez and, and Ridvan on the left, if you have Dujon Sterling in there. But Rangers' squad, and as we'll come on to discuss uh, throughout the rest of this video, a lot of changes happening or, or, or about to happen. And, and the Hearts game obviously only gets closer. I think the two questions on style of play, and I know that was put to Clement after the game, um, where, I, where I think he uh, he is right uh, or, or he, he needs to be given some time is that he's not playing with the strongest 11. He has had his hands tied a lot. If you look at the quality of his squad at the moment, we obviously uh, depressed everyone yesterday, didn't we, with, with that um with that squad depth chart that we put out, that yeah. was uh, that, that, that was not, uh, what you know, it just shows the reality. I think, yeah, it shows the reality of where Rangers are at the moment and how much work they have to do, and the quality that Clermont has, both in the, the, the you know quality on the ball, but also I think that maybe the aggression he'll want off the ball, um, a lot of that is lacking. I think if you look reflecting on that squad depth chart from yesterday, Derek, how many positions do Rangers not need to strengthen? And that's maybe a question that shows. The reality of, of the difficult, really difficult hand that Clermont and Coppin have been have been dealt this summer, uh, and now have to get out of. Where I think there is, and again, we're going to come on to this more next week. Look a little bit more at Clermont's style of play and, and, and do some articles and videos around that. If Mohamed Diomande, and maybe this is different if, if Conor Barron is on the side as well, but the only real time Rangers were able to kind of play through the pitch was that when the chance fell to, I think it was Ravi Matondo, was it, or maybe Danilo, when Inciala played that pass into yeah, Kevin McKinnon. McKinnon. Yeah. That was only because it was Diomande who was a deeper player. Normally he was one who was you know higher up connecting the play. That means that Rangers can't play out. It's something that we, we spoke about a lot ever since, if you go back to the Rangers 1-0 win over Hearts when Danilo got that injury, the fact that they have been pretty direct under Clermont from back to front with a, an idea of trying to attack quickly and getting behind defences. That can also lead to the fact that you, you don't have control of the ball in the same way for, for a lot of the time as materialised in that first half last night. And the second facet is the is the press. And again, I've, I've not watched the game back yet. It's something that we're going to look at in a little bit more detail. What exactly is Clermont's team trying to do off the ball? When has it worked last season? When hasn't it worked? You remember, Derek, there was a time just before the Ross County game. And I remember you and I did a video, I think it was after Rangers beat Hibs 3-1 at home. And Tavernier scored the goal that became the highest uh, scoring defender in British history. And we did a video about the counter-attacks Rangers were conceding. And, you know, there were some mixed comments. Some people were... We're saying that it was we're right to flag it. Some people were saying, you know, well, Rangers are still winning games. But around that time of the season, when they lost to Ross County away from home and they conceded something like the highest expected goals tally in, in, in five or six seasons, they were so open in the middle of the pitch. And that is clearly an issue that at times, because of the way Clermont's t- teams are trying to attack, that can leave them very open in, in the middle of the pitch. And that comes down to, I think, the profile of player that you have as well. I don't think it's a new problem. I think there's issues that this transfer window had to solve. The difficulty is 
again, as we'll come on to discuss, because of the flux at the moment, because of the outgoings, the indecision, the fact that Rangers need to have a, a squad submitted in a number of days, um, it's a hard place to actually judge the product until we have a stronger starting eleven on the pitch. But obviously, it looks like uh, certainly in the next couple of weeks, it is going to be a bit of, of Clermont having to cobble together elements of a team because there's only so much work you can do in, in a transfer window in a, in a couple of weeks, I guess. Yeah, uh, Magic Man 147's kindly donated uh, to the channel. He says, uh, no shape, no patterns of play, press a mess, dire. So, uh, yep, a uh, good uh, summation of uh, Rangers last night. Uh, Dave's Dugs gets in touch. My main concern right now is Big Phil seems determined to stick to this 4 2 3 1, which clearly isn't working. We'd love to see a 4 3 3 this season, but I think he's too stubborn to change. Um, yeah. Uh, I said it before, I'd scrap the number 10 role. Uh, I think it's not working for Rangers at this moment in time. They don't have the personnel uh, to do it, And uh, but whether Clement changes uh, remains to be seen. But uh, yeah, he has uh, work on his hands to get this squad uh, in shape for the trip to Tyne Castle. Uh, yeah, just on, 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 just on the squad, sorry to interrupt, but this is why, we we again, we uh, apologies if we've made this point before, um, but look at Rangers' last four seasons. So what season is it now? 20, 24, 25? Um, so 20, going into the 2021 20, 22 season, you had Steven Gerrard's style of play, which was high and wide fullbacks, narrow number 10s, a very defined style of play that had been built over a number of years and was starting to develop. Then you change to Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, who actually his style of play was really different in, in a lot of ways. He wanted to use wingers. His fullbacks weren't really that attacking, apart from James Tavernier in Europe. Um, he obviously he used his midfield in a different way. You remember the R field and the Rebo were kind of the midfield runners, and number eights going beyond, as opposed to a Glenn Kamara being a number eight who, who sat deep and allowed the fullback to go beyond. You start the next season then with, with Michael Beale, who's back to kind of what Gerard was doing, a little bit more developed, but again, if, if you look at the, the complement of Rangers squad when they started last season, obviously Todd Cantwell was left out, but it's Barisic and Tavernier wide, Lundstrom is a kind of running number eight, Nico Raskin at the base midfield, Kieran Dowell, and then that, this front three of Sam Lammers as a number 10, Abdallah Seaman and Cyril Dessers as split strikers, and then look what they're trying to do this season. You can't do that uh, to, to be if you want to be successful, and, and that is uh, th that, that is why Rangers have, have and are changing the recruitment policy. You know, I think the average age of outfield players signed under uh, Niels Koppen is uh, 20 or, or 21 uh, years old. And obviously there hasn't been a kind of football and figure of continuity. There hasn't been a sporting director or a director of recruitment over those four seasons. But when you change play, when, when you change style of play so much, when you, as Clement said to the press a couple of weeks ago, um, make those short-term decisions and not long-term decisions, I think you end up where Rangers are just now, where they're trying to reboot and recalibrate their squad and they've also changed their style of play and that leads to square pegs and round holes which we saw last season with Dujon Sterling playing in every single position which we, we saw with Tom Lawrence and Kieran Dowell converted to deep line midfielders Fabio Silva playing as a left-sided midfielder so I think it's just important to remember the context that I think this is bad decision making in terms of squad planning over the last couple of years come back to now being an issue which Rangers are trying to try to solve in one window, uh, that's that's obviously difficult to do. And the style of play criticism, I, I think that's totally fair because you watch this pre-season and um, there has been a, a, a lot of, I think, things to, to, to worry people watching at home because they want to see a pre-season that excites them ahead uh, of the new campaign. I just also think as well it's hard to judge it when you've not got that strongest start in 11, when you have players like Danilo coming out of such a, a, a long injury and when you have been dealt the hand that Clement has been dealt with. But I think the comment is right. It might be uh, you know, a fair point. Does he need to adapt? Does he need to change what he's doing and, and not stick into this number 10? Because we've, we've not really seen him deviate from it at all uh, since he came to the club last October. Uh, yeah, uh, there was a few comments in the last few weeks, supporters saying, could this be a transitional season? Uh, we just need to sort of accept it. And uh, based on last night, then sort of coming around to the idea that it may very well be uh, Rangers at this moment in time, so far off where they need to be. Uh, and uh, as you say, Josh, your time is uh, running out before we kick mm. off for real. Um, let's discuss the manager's comments after the game. Interestingly, Spoke in his press conference and, uh, and then he left. Uh, so it was about two or three minutes afterwards he decided to come back in on uh, on his own accord to uh, get something off his chest. Uh, and this is what he had to say. He's not in Cyprus. Uh, he was with us. Oh, well, this is uh, Golson, sorry, folks. The idea, uh, to play with Connor, to start like that. 
but uh, there's no concrete interest for him and uh, I allowed him to travel back to, to have these talks. Where? But it's not that, f that far away. Not too far away. The talks, no. <laughs> So that was sorry. That was uh, on Connor Goldson. Uh, he was speaking about in the in initial press conference. Uh, the manager uh, was supposed to play last night, uh, but uh, Rangers received the bid, which has been accepted. So they allowed Connor to go and have a chat with his prospective employers. Now it's widely expected that Aris Limassol will as be be his destination. Um, so uh, I don't think we'll see Connor Goldson in the Rangers jersey again, Joshua. No surprise given the, the speculation which has intensified in the last week. And uh, yep, uh, it will be interesting to see how much money Rangers get for him, but it will be a hefty wage off the, the wage bill. Yeah, well, we obviously still got two years in his contract. Um, he had obviously flown out, uh, out, out of the country on, I think it was Sunday and and back on Monday, he then travelled down with the squad and that picture had kind of circulated on social media, hadn't it? The photo of him, uh, part of the squad that was travelling down to Birmingham. As Clement confirmed there yesterday, though, uh, left, the, left the camp in the afternoon to go and have these talks. Interesting that he said not too far away, a bit of a, a cryptic message. We know that the Golden has had interest from more than one club. As you say, uh, Derek Aris is the one, uh, the, the one name where there's been most noise. Uh, linked to, to Connor Goldson, but would expect him to go as kind of has been the expectation for, for a while. I think if you go back to when he was dropped by Philippe Clement last season, that told you that he wasn't going to be the centrepiece going forward because it was a big thing to drop him. He'd never been dropped in his time at Rangers before. He'd always been the, the centrepiece of things. And listen, again, we'll have this conversation if and, if and when he goes. He's been someone who's been always available for Rangers, must have played what, upwards of 50, 60 games in yeah. Europe. Yeah, only only thirty. What is he? Thirty-one years old. That that end of last season, I think, was the worst spell he'd had in a Rangers shirt, and he, and he hit a vein of form which I don't think he'd, he'd had seen him hit previously over a long period of time. He's had his critics, and he's had those who praise him. And um, certainly for the first three or four seasons at Rangers, at, at, or, or maybe after his first season, the intervening three and four uh, seasons at Rangers, he had more good games than bad. But also, you, you look at this summer, you look at the fact that Clement had dropped him. It probably was the right time for all parties for him uh, to go. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that one over the next couple of days and, and one to keep an eye on. Might not be the only outgoing that's happening at Rangers soon. Yeah, uh, reading between the lines on, on when you're saying is he in Cyprus, know that Aris Limassol are in Austria on a pre-season tour uh, or pre-season training camp there. So uh, it, it might be referring to that. They might be referring to the talks being at an advanced stage or indeed uh, closer uh, to home. Who knows? But uh, yeah, Connor Goldson heading out the door. Uh, so he touched on that. Uh, before we get to Cantwell, he also in the press conference spoke about uh, Sam Lammers uh, and says uh, he's... Uh, uh, playing with the, the the second string because he's not part of his plans. We know reports yesterday from uh, good source in the Netherlands suggest that FC Twenty had a bid of around five million euros uh, accepted for him. So it looks like he's going to uh, move over to there to continue his uh, playing career. I think it's a, probably a decent fee for uh, Sam Lammers. I think I'd be quite quite satisfied with that uh, Rangers. Uh, getting their money back and a wee bit more for him. It's clear that he wasn't part uh, of uh, the manager's plan. So he's another one that's heading out, Joshua. Yeah, still trying to work out exactly what that, that fee is. So we'll uh, try and track that down as and when it does happen. But it's been clear, I think, the the we had a, a story up about two months ago. It was a, the week after the season finished. Rangers had those talks with Lammers because there was, I guess, some discussion to be had and there were some murmurs, should Rangers give him another chance? You know, if if... Lammers was a player not attached to Rangers and he was scoring this amount. These type of goals in the Eredivisie, would he not be someone who was linked? But he was someone that also Clement let go in January, didn't he? Um, having had, even before I think the pre-season happened, the pre-season camp, Lammers wasn't over there, if memory no. serves me correctly. And uh, Clement confirmed last night that it's right for all parties that he goes, Rangers will get a bit of money back in. And that is going to be important for them as they, they try to, to strengthen their squad because, again, you look at it last night, there's a lot of academy players, but a lot of gaps that they need to fill between now and the end of August. Uh, uh, surprised to see James Tavernier start last night, given the sort of speculation? I was, yeah, but I think you, if you look at Goldson as well, the fact that um, the speculation about around him has been not... It's been kind of similar, hasn't it? It's not. It's not as if one's been yeah. a one's been a secret. 
Uh, and Goulton obviously played against Manchester United a few days ago. Tavernier travelled out and, and and hadn't trained because of injury. And Clement was, was pretty open about that. And um, the, the the fact that throughout that whole preseason camp he'd been carrying an injury. But I was I was slightly surprised. Um, with that, we know obviously that there's been a second offer for James Tavernier. We'd still expect that to happen. Obviously, things can change in the transfer window and you never know what happens. I've seen some people last night suggesting on social media that, oh, you know, if, if a number of players left and Tavernier remained, maybe that wouldn't be the worst thing. I think we've spoken previously about the fact that if he wasn't the captain, maybe if he wasn't a right back, that would the discussion be different about him, Derek? Because what we've, we've not touched upon that much at all is the fact that you know, his, his, his goal contribution, trying to replace that, is going to be pretty significant for Rangers in, in, in the upcoming campaign. Uh, but you also look at the fact that Clement doesn't have many players available. Tavernier, like Goldson, has always been someone who's been really available uh, to, to play for Rangers. And I'm sure last night on the return from injury, that was an, an extension of what we've seen with Goldson until that, 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 that the, the offer is accepted, until the player is about to go, uh, they'll remain as, uh, as part of Clement's squad. Yeah, right, let's get what he had to say. Hopefully I get the, the clip right this time. Uh, hopefully this is Cantmill. I'm going to uh, the manager talking about uh, Todd Cantmill. Here we go. Um, I want to speak about Todd Cantwell, who came in my office a while ago, and we have a really good relationship, so we talked long about that. But he came a while ago to say that he feels ready for another adventure that he wants another challenge. I spoke along with him because I think Rangers is a, a really good club for him. Uh, and I wanted to give him time also. So that's why the last couple of weeks I didn't speak about it. But he came back with, uh, with the same request. So I'm going to be focused uh, the next couple of weeks in that way on the guys who are uh, with their heads with Rangers for, uh, for the next month to come. Is he close to joining another club? I don't know if he's close. I don't know. Stevie, one last question. Just on that, um, Philippe, is it true that he's been allowed to train down south with his old club knowledge? No. Or is he still remaining here to train no, with he, us until he, he trained, transfer? No, he trained with us all the time. And he played also with the second team because of that, because we we need to focus then on the, on the guys who will be here mm -hmm. the next month. Okay, thank you. So there you go, Joshua. He's put in a transfer request, Todd Cantwell. That's the reason why we haven't seen him in pre-season. He wants out of the club. Uh, what's your thought? We do know Rangers were open to offers for him. Uh, it was no surprise, but uh, interesting that the manager came in off his own back yesterday to uh, address that. Yeah, and obviously, uh, according to Clement, he's kind of given him time to think about that decision and, and mull it over, but now feels is the appropriate time, obviously, with the, mm. the fact that Rangers will need to need to move him on if he does want to leave, uh, to, to publicly state what the, the reality is. I think eagle-eyed uh, viewers and, and listeners will have seen a couple of weeks ago, Clement's interview after the Ajax game, he was asked about James Tavernier at the end, and he said that Tavernier had a small injury, and when he was asked about Campwell and pushed on whether it was a small injury. He, he said there's some small things going on, or sort of some equivalent comment to that, which I think in hindsight is, is pretty revealing. There was a time last season where Campwell under Clement, and we all know that at times he there's been a lot of noise that surrounds Ed Campwell. And I think at the start of last year, when he was scoring a lot of goals, scored that winner against Aberdeen, didn't he? where it felt like he was, we're starting to see the best of him under Philippe Clement. He'd had two injuries last season. He was obviously substituted early on against Aris Limassol, spoke about that after. And 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 you thought that maybe that was uh, starting to work under Clement, maybe the style of play, maybe the fact that there had obviously been some difficult moments in that relationship, was, that was going to come together for, for the, the good of that season. He got injured away at St. Johnston and the, and the season really never picked up after that. You remember after the, the Scottish Cup final, they exchanged some harsh words on the pitch. But again, according to Clement, and, and it's important to stress, I think man management, that is something that he takes a lot of pride in. And if you speak to people who have worked with him in particular, you'll have heard him speak about these individual talks that he has on, on pre-season camps with every single player and the whole uh, and, and the whole of the, the coaching staff. That's a really important facet of his management. He clearly feels that, as you say, Derek, while Rangers have been open to offers for effectively every member of their squad, everyone has a price. Obviously, there's players they, they definitely don't want to let go. For example, someone like Dujon Sterling or Mohamed Diamandi or, or Ridvan Yomaz are, are three names that come to mind. 
but Clement clearly, all, obviously, as he's saying publicly, wanted to, to try and convince Campbell that until that time was right, maybe Rangers was the right place for him. Campbell's 26. It'd be interesting to know what the, the thinking is from his point of view. Is it about style of play? Is it about operating in a different league? Whatever it may be. Uh, but uh, as Clement has suggested and as now materialises, it looks like that 18 months at Ibrox is, is going to come to an end and, and probably going to come to an end with Rangers fans having seen flashes of Campwell at his best and, and yeah. some good spells, but not, a, a, I guess, a sustained period of him really being at the front of the team as, as he was in, at the start of last year. I, I, I don't know what you think about it. It was always unlikely that he was going to be the number 10, you know, yeah. Clement's number 10 going into this New season, the fact that, he, that the manager, Rangers manager came back into the press conference last night to make that point, that feels pretty definitive, doesn't it? Yeah, just not just not consistent enough, unfortunately. I mean, he was a Michael Beale signing at the end of the day. Uh, he enjoyed playing under, under Michael Beale. Uh, and this happens sometimes with players when there's a managerial change. The, 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 um, they don't get on with uh, the new manager and uh, they uh, head off to pastures new. And that is what ha- has happened with Todd Cantwell. We know that there's interest in Saudi Arabia. I think a few clubs down south as well are keen on him. Uh, so uh, I just hope that Rangers do get a good fee for Todd Cantwell. But yeah, uh, I think we've, he's seen the last of him in a Rangers jersey. Let's discuss uh, potential incomings then, Joshua, um, yes. because it seems like the wheels are very much now in motion. Uh, we talked yesterday about uh, Vaclav Cherny following... Wait. Uh, the club and his dad following at Rangers on Instagram. Uh, that moved somewhat swiftly yesterday uh, to a point where Rangers hopeful of uh, concluding a deal soon. Uh, can you tell us the latest on that one? Yeah, uh, again, it was literally this time yesterday we were speaking about it and didn't have any information on it then. Um, obviously, there's a, there's a lot of names going around this uh, transfer window as ever, but we did a bit of digging in the, in the day after, uh, sorry, in the kind of hours after the morning briefing and now expect that deal to be done. Um, I think as widely reported now by a number of outlets, not only in, in Germany, but also here in Scotland as well. A winger only had a brief look into him. He obviously moved to to Wolfsburg last summer for a fair fee. Was at uh, Euro 2024 with the Czech Republic. Believe it is a loan deal, not 100% sure on, on the, the specifics around that. We've obviously seen Rangers do these loan-to-buy kind of obligation and loan-to-buy options with Cortez and Diamandi. So that's something that we're going to try and firm up and will become clear uh, in the next couple of days. But expect him, unless, um, you know, the, the usual caveats of, of transfers, unless there's a late hiccup, would expect him to join Philippe Clement's squad. And, and yeah, we'll just have to, to wait and see uh, as and when that happens, Derek. But it's clearly that type of profile, as, as we discussed yesterday, a left-footed right winger is the type of player uh, that Rangers needs um, someone who I think can play on, on both sides as well and, and they need first team quality they need a little bit of experience in there as quickly as possible so don't know too much about the player we're going to have some uh, content and coverage uh, of him over the next couple of days but yeah certainly one to to watch this space and you've seen that quite a lot with Rangers in this transfer window where Clement as you remember in his Rangers TV interview in the Netherlands at the, at the pre-season training camp said that look, we have agreements with a number of players, but effectively we need to get players out the door first. I think his quote was, we've convinced several players that Rangers is the right place for them. So there hadn't been much noise about a journey up until, uh, as far as I was aware, yesterday morning. But yeah, it looks like the one that, that has subsequently moved pretty quickly and, and, and maybe it is that pendulum of now when Rangers are st- starting to get players out the door and when that noise does increase, also the noise about incomings will happen ahead of the, ahead of the new campaign. Yeah, another player that has been linked, uh, well, uh, we did a video on him, of course, is Juan Jordan. Uh, Rangers had an initial loan bid knocked back by Sevilla. The club, the Liga club, did expect Rangers to come in with an improved offer and uh, reports over in Sevilla uh, from uh, Fernando Serrano. Uh, he's, uh, well, uh, in the bricks over there, covers uh, Sevilla uh, in great detail, says that Rangers have increased their loan offer uh, to, they'll pay now 40% of the salary of the Spanish midfielder. Um, now, if you want to learn a wee bit more about him, folks, uh, I did a video with um, Rory uh, Barlow, uh, who's an editor of Football España. He goes in great detail about uh, Juan Jordan uh, and what we can expect should he pitch up at Ibrox. I think it's clear, though, Joshua, I think from, from last night and previous matches, even the last season, Rangers need a proper midfield enforcer in there, someone that's going to, uh, a Barry Ferguson type, if, if you like, uh, someone that can dictate play and really 
influence games. Uh, and by all accounts, this lad seems to uh, be someone that Rangers are very much interested in getting. Uh, so, um, yep, yeah, let's hope this one can uh, materialise. But uh, apart from that, from speaking to uh, Rory uh, a couple of days ago, didn't know too much about him, but he has been frozen out by uh, Sevilla. He has been told to find a new club. It will be a loan deal because he has a good few years left on his contract at Sevilla, um, but he's not part of their plans going forward. So certainly something to keep an eye on. But it's an area of the pitch we've discussed before, Joshua. They need to strengthen it, I think. Oh, yeah, undoubtedly. And, and obviously there's not many areas, especially with the Goldson news, that are an exception to that. But you look at the right wing in the centre midfield, and I think those are two positions that, that have to be a priority. Spoke about it yesterday. Rangers need that number six to, I think, help them play out, help knit things together, allow Diomande and Barron and, and, and Raskin when he's back fit. Um, if he comes back into the squad as, as well uh, to, to be that kind of number eight in between, um, they, they need depth, they need quality in the centre midfield. And Jordan would definitely fit that profile. And a bit of experience in there. I don't think Rangers have had a real, the, the right profile at the base midfield since Stephen Davis was, was playing there a few seasons ago. Someone who, uh, as I say, can really knit things together in possession, break teams down. And when Rangers are trying to create chances domestically, and, and and that would certainly fit the profile. And again, it's it's what you see that pattern of this transfer window is with the younger profiles that Rangers have been able to get into the squad. They've been bought permanently, and and with uh, slightly older profiles, they're being brought in on loan. There is an element of I guess trying to get through this season and, and build for the future as well simultaneously, which is a a difficult balance. But I don't think many people would deny that that Rangers need quality and midfield, but they also need a bit of experience and, and Jordan would uh, would definitely take both those boxes. Yeah, another player that was linked, uh, I'm not too sure if, if we discussed him, but uh, Rangers need a forward, Joshua. I mean, Lauren Shanklin's name was uh, came back into the ether a couple of days ago. Uh, another one uh, that they've been heavily linked with uh, and were linked with, I think, last season, was it? Morgan Whitaker uh, mm -hmm. of Argyle. Uh, now, uh, some of the fees being quoted are uh, Quite substantial, to say the least. Uh, he is a very talented uh, lad, um, but uh, in positive noises with regards to that one, whether something materialises, who knows. But um, certainly they need, uh, based on, but we've discussed it at length, haven't we? Rangers need a proper a proper striker. I think uh, someone in the mould of Morgan Whitaker would fit the bill. Yeah, and he can play off both sides, can't he, as well? Um, and it was the, I think it was the January, Michael Beale's first January, where there was a lot of, there was a lot of um, interest and I think a bid from Rangers. He then subsequently, if I'm not wrong, you'll know because you, you cover the English leagues more than me, but he became Plymouth's record signing uh, around about £4 million. Pounds, am I right in saying that? It could be, could be wrong. Uh, yeah, he actually, he actually played because I covered both. He actually played against, I think he came off the bench, Plymouth won a game. I can't remember, remember the score, but uh, he never actually caught the eye. Uh, mm. But he is someone that is uh, highly rated down there, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as you say, and those noises are... Noises are pretty live, and, and similarly to you, it's not one that, that's it's not a name that you've heard and has, has been shot down. Some of the fees quoted are pretty high, but we know that he's a player that Rangers have definitely um, had concrete interest in in the past, and that's unlikely to have, have changed over the last what eighteen months or so. It would cost more now than he would have then, and that's an important point to mention. But as you're saying, they, they need quality at the front end of the pitch. They need to add that. Obviously, you know you saw that goal from Scott Wright last night, which was a which was which a really good one. However, he's not someone that Rangers are going to build around this season, for example. And, and we've discussed as well that the increasing reports coming out down south of interest in his services. So another one to watch. I think it's going to be a, a busy August for Rangers in terms of trying to get more quality in. And, and, and it has to be um, the, the, the friendly against, who's it, Saturday against Union Berlin. That has to be, I think, an opportunity as well for Clement's side to Play the, play the strongest team that he has available. And I know preseason is not about that, but you, you'd imagine he'll want to replicate some semblance of the team he's going to play against Hearts in a week's time because a lot of these players maybe haven't played together. There's some coming back from injury. Who's going to start up top away at Hearts? You'd, you'd imagine it's going to be several Dessers. But also, you'd imagine, try and build some optimism ahead of the new campaign as well. So be interesting to, to, to watch that Union Berlin game. Hopefully it's a, a bit of a better watch than, than last night was. And it can't be any worse. Because yeah, Rangers will have long until until it kicks off for real in, in what eight or nine days' time. Yep. Right, folks, that'll do us there. If there's any transfer news, uh, if we hear of anything, uh, keep your eyes peeled on the social media channels on YouTube and on the website. And also, if you've joined us on the WhatsApp group as well, uh, you can get up to date with all the latest breaking news there. Uh, we'll do some digging today as well to get to 
uh, the bottom of uh, those rumours and what the latest is with the potential incomings. So, uh, yeah, plenty to uh, get on with today. Uh, you can uh, watch Philip uh, Clement's press conference in full over on the YouTube channel. Uh, we'll also hear from uh, Danilo as well. So that will drop on the YouTube channel as well uh, in a couple of hours. So uh, it was uh, interesting to hear from him also. Right, that'll do us there. Big thanks to Joshua and to each and every one of you for tuning in to the show. If we don't speak to you later on, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Bye for now.